Hey people, it's Thursday and we're just rolling. It's the 25th of January. My goodness, we were just talking about Happy New Year. Now the month is almost, we got one week left. Cheers. Let me get this out of the way right quick, folks. Um, the latest comment is, the person says you have 10,000 albums I don't have 10,000 albums. You don't know how many records I have. He says, you have 10,000 albums and you don't play them for us? Is it because you're a victim? That doesn't even make any sense. Would you explain yourself? How am I supposed to be playing records for anyone else when I'm at home, alone? What are you talking about? The thing that I discovered is by trying to be a people pleaser, and putting everyone else before me, that made me a victim. So I don't do that anymore. I don't people please. I'm going to leave that comment. I see that it has several likes. It's like, is this a cultural thing? Are you from a different country? Explain yourself. What does that mean? And this again is another example of what irritates me. The person has made a, a statement. You have 10,000 albums. You don't know how many albums I have. That's very, very irksome, people. And that's why you will hear me do this more and more. Being in a public position like this is a very vulnerable position. I don't know any of you people. I, You know, for the most part, I don't know who you are. So when people come over with that weirdness and snark, and it's like, the fuck is up with you? Please explain yourself, okay? And put yourself in my place. Please. Maybe you can't, so never mind. Cheers. I feel like I feel, I, I do feel like a, a weight has been lifted from me by trying to explain once and for all this madness I've been dealing with. I, I, I want it to be behind me. But I get up this morning and I see this comment and it's like, what the hell is that? So explain yourself or don't. It doesn't make any sense. How the fuck am I going to play records for you when I'm at home? It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Okay, so someone has passed away in the um, music world, and it touches me. Melanie Safka passed away on the 23rd. Love her voice. She had that big hit, Brand New Key, and I don't know, did she play Woodstock? I think she did. Anyway, some history. I have her first American album. I don't know how I acquired this. I think someone gave it to me because I got it with no cover. And I've had it since I was a child. This came out in 1968. I think I got this in 1968. It's a promo. A promotional copy. And it's beat to hell. I've played it a million times, just like I used to do when I was a kid. I put my name on my records, you know. For the longest time, it didn't have a cover at all. And then, I don't know how long ago it's been now, but I was able to get some blank covers finally. And uh, this is one of my first, this is probably my first homemade record cover. And um, there it is. I, unfortunately, not unfortunately, but I didn't think to put a, a date on here as to when I made this. And there's a song on this album that's, again, I played this a lot because I didn't have any records. You know, um, my sister Stephanie, if I played this, she would, she would recognize it because she wouldn't be listening. But if, you know, she'd be in my proximity to my bedroom she'd hear me playing this song again. It's the last song on side A. It's just, it's a, it's a childhood favorite. 
It's the feeling. It's not so much the words. It's the feeling. You know, someone asked me about my attitude about lyrics, and it's hard to explain. Um, it's just how something hits me. The main thing to say is that the most important thing to me is the sound. People can say profound things, and it's cool, and I get it. People can say profound things that are literary, and I don't get it because I don't know the literary references. So in that sense, I think there's a lot of stuff that's been made that's has meaning, but I don't know anything about it because I didn't read the books. And then um, regarding what Paul McCartney says regarding silly love songs, well, they have their place, but I'm not that I'm not a romantic. And so a lot of love songs do not interest me. And some lyrics, you know, people just come up, like on my Derek 2, um, the lyrics are in that. They're nothing special, but I needed to sing something. <clears throat> so I don't know what else to say. It's the picture. And I'll contradict myself because there's records where the words are integral to my enjoyment. It's hard to explain. I just know what I like. So, I'll frame this as a celebration. So, yesterday the used updates from Grapefruit and Homer's were interesting. I didn't go to Homer's. I had them hold one for me, a Susie and the Banshees album. But when I saw Grapefruit's update yesterday, I jumped in the car right away. They got in a couple albums that I, I've been very excited. Very excited to add these to my collection. Very excited. And I kind of blew out, you know, while I was there. I, I, I kind of knew this was going to happen. I hadn't been to Grapefruit in a while. And uh, Simon Joyner... Um, Love the guy. I ought to have him on here, you know, just to, to chat. He gets the kind of stuff I'm after. And he got two albums that I've been wanting. One I didn't know was on vinyl. The other one's just been reissued. I'm so happy. Haromi Hosono is one of my top musicians along with Ryuichi Sakamoto. Happy End was one of his early bands. This has just been reissued. Happy End... Originally came out in 1973. This is a Japanese. This is not an American um, pastiche. This is an actual new Japanese pressing from the label that put it out originally. Bellwood. High quality tip on jacket. It's got the inserts like the Japanese records do. I love Hosono's work. <clears throat> Interestingly, this band, there's a lot of Americanism on this sound. They love Western, they love the San Francisco sound. They love, you know, American music. And in that sense, their love for the music filtered through their experience gives it a different, slightly different feel that I appreciate. I just love Hosono. I just love his work and happy to add that to my collection. I might even show my collection. The other record I didn't know um, this was. I have this since it came out on CD and DVD. I don't, you know, I don't know that I've ever had a chance to get it on vinyl. Akito Yano super folk song. When I saw this in the, in the, um, the uh, thumbnail, I grabbed my shoes. Akiko Yano is one of my favorite singers. She has a kind of voice that's nasally. You love it or you hate it. She's done J-pop, but she is beyond J-pop. She was married to Sakamoto, and she was part of Yellow Magic Orchestra's tra um, um, touring a band, touring lineup. This is a, an acoustic piano solo album. And she holds it down. I mean, she's a brilliant pianist, 
but she sings with great depth and feeling and joy. That's what I like about the, her voice soars. Uh, Kate Bush is close, a close comparison, Kate Bush. But I knew that I was, I mean this jokingly, I knew I was in trouble when I went to Great Brook because I hadn't been there for months. So I knew there was stuff in there waiting for me and I wasn't going to get out of there cheaply. And I didn't. But the way that I frame it to myself is, let me celebrate. This is one of the things that I enjoy the most. And like I said, I feel like I'm getting a weight lifted off of me by you know, addressing, hopefully once and for all, this abuse that I've been putting up with. And it's been more than comments, people. You folks who keep telling me, you're sensitive, just blow it up. You don't know what I've been through. You don't. It's far beyond this. These comments. They've literally attempted to ruin my life. And they have hurt me. It has hurt me. So that's why you're hearing about it. Okay. So... I said to myself while I was in the store, I'm going to get the stuff that when I leave the store, usually in the store, at Grapefruit especially, I'll leave the store leaving stuff behind and then I'll be thinking about it, you know. And I said to myself this time, I'm going to buy everything that I want today instead of going home wishing I had a it and then coming back and it's gone, okay? So, I'm going to show you everything I bought yesterday. It was a haul. I'm celebrating. Before I show it, I want to say this, okay? Um, David Nance and Mode Sound. I'm excited. That album comes out in the, uh, on February 9th on Jack White of the White Stripes, formerly of the White Stripes, his record label, Third Man, a, a modern-day success story, Rag to Riches. You know, I applaud Jack White. It means a lot to me to be on a, a label like that that people know. It means a lot to me. When I, a lot to me. I missed it on Monday, but I caught it yesterday. I scrolled back through the music news. I love seeing my face in the music news. Brooklyn Vegan. It didn't make Pitchfork. I, I, I think it'll make it when it, the actual album release. But we're on Third Man's records on their site. Pitchfork Monday um, featured us um, in the new um, song section. Uh, there's Stereo Gum and there's some other magazines where they're spelling my name wrong, but I still, I love seeing there I am. So I'm sharing that. That's also what I'm celebrating. I'm celebrating that. And I'm celebrating the fact, the, the message I got from my record label, FPE. You know, I shared it with Blake and James last night. I'm celebrating. I'm very happy. I'm also celebrating because of your support and the majority of what I see here from you decent people, thank you. The majority of you are decent. You're the folks, I don't understand, I don't, I don't know what's wrong with you. I don't. So what else did I buy? This is Flower Traveling Band. Can I see it right quick? Yeah. Flower Traveling Band, Japanese band, the Japanese Led Zeppelin is what some people call them. This is the album that everybody, <clears throat> not everybody knows, but this is the album that is known by Flower Traveling Band, Satori. This is not an original. Look it up, an original would cost you a grand or close. Is this that classic? Yeah, this is something. This is something. Uh, just to, to show right quick, I was going to do this with whole so uh, Sono, but I'll do it with Flower Traveling Band. I've got makeup. This originally came in a leather bag. That's that's a reissue. And then this famous one where they're riding motorcycles naked anywhere. So 
when I this was in the used, I grabbed it. But it's a it's a it's a bootleg. It's not a official reissue. That's why when it first came into the store, I didn't buy it. You know, I don't like buying out out and out bootlegs, and. When I see stuff that's on unofficial labels, if it's something I really want and it's really hard to find, I'll grab it. So when this popped into, when, when I saw this in the used section marked down, I said, okay, I'm getting it. Here's a record store day release that I passed on because I didn't have the background and I didn't look it up. This was in used and I'm so glad because it was marked way down Gordon Jackson, thinking back, when I when when this came out on Record Store Day a few years ago, the album originally came out in 1969. It caught my attention. I didn't look at the back, or else I probably would have bought it because. And this is a real cool reissue done by Sunbeam, big fat ass book that tells the whole story, and it's quite a story. This Gordon Jackson guy, this album. Traffic is the backing band, and it tells a story of how he came up through the 60s with Jim Capaldi and Dave Mason of Traffic, and they're all on this album, including Steve Winwood and Julie Driscoll and some other folks, Polly Palmer, excuse me, who ended up in um, Family, started out with this guy. This is the kind of thing I like. This is the sort of singer-songwriter. It's not singer-songwriter. It's Bill Fay comes to mind. Um, Tim Hollier. Scott Walker. There's others. This is immediately tuneful and good. Um, strong hook on the first song. Okay. It's a pastiche of the Marmalade label, which I don't have any. I'd love to have labels or something I like. And there are some labels that are hard for me to acquire here in Nebraska. I don't have anything on the Marmalade label. I would love it. But this is really cool because it came with a 7-inch as well of this jam called The Day at the Cottage that it turns out that Paul McCartney let him know it was either this song or one on the album that gave Paul McCartney the idea for the long end of Hey Jude, where they do the na-na-nas. He let Gordon Jackson know he got it from him, the idea from this this guy's songs. This is really good. Real good. Just This is just... And there's a nostalgic factor to it, too. 1969, I hear the times that this is high quality, and the playing and this, the writing on it is top. So I got that. I'm going long here, so I might not go through the hole. I might actually stop around 20 minutes and, and do this in two parts. I had Edward Caspell of Legendary Pink Dots on last year in May. And I probably will ask him to come on the, the show again. Um, I really like his music. Um, so this was in the used. Angel in the Detail. Legendary Pink Dots have over 100 albums, you know. So I couldn't endeavor to... To collect them all, but what is fascinating to me about Edward Caspell is the the continuous upward trajectory of his songwriting and realization of the music, and how consistently in, in, interesting and original the music is. How does he do it? I think the guy is a bit of a phenomenon. This is the double album, and I played. I bought a bunch of records. I played all this last night because it's like, damn. I mean, he, he hits me on in all the areas that I really like. Sonority, um, interesting key changes, unexpected turns in where the music goes. Some of his lyrics are kind of dark, which I'm not that interested in, but I'm intrigued. So... Legendary Pink Dots. Wow. A couple more, okay? I won't do them all. This one I've had on CD for a while. Zero Set, Mobius, Plank, and Neumeyer. Yeah, when I first saw that cover years ago, I was like, oh, but then I hear the music, and it's they're really 
trying to get African rhythms on here. And they do a pretty good job, actually. There's a couple things on there. Pitch control. The, the track pitch control on here is killer. Interestingly, I was just talking about Sky Label yesterday. My friend Tom Ware, I got him on the label. This is one of those Skies. This is a reissue, though. My Bureau B numbered. Only 500 of these on white vinyl. <clears throat> There's that collectible label, Sky. This is very good. Manny Neumeyer of um, Guru Guru. Friend of mine on Facebook. We've actually um, had conversations. I was real happy to get this. Real happy. Zero set. And... I'll stop here. There's more real cool records to show. So I was real happy. And I had to, I had to, I got to the point where I said, okay, I have to stop because I know I'm already spending more than I usually do. But I can't leave these records here. So here's one where I'll be able to do a trade out. Sand. I had this already. His first steps. German psychedelic, crazy psychedelic band. But I knew that they put this out in a few editions. So again, in the used section, this was basically brand new, but opened. But it's the color variant, which, as I said, I enjoy. So I grab this. That is... Cool beans. As my sister Stephanie says, cool beans. If you haven't heard this sand stuff and you like head music and trippy shit, where it's like you don't even quite know where did they get these ideas. That's what I love about this. It's like where the, this is really good. So there's more. There's more. But I'll stop here because the time goes so quickly. Last thing I'll say is, again, folks, thank you for your support. Explain yourselves. You know, I do understand I'm being watched by people all over the world. So maybe this comment where the pervert person is asking me about playing records for others and am I a victim? I don't understand that. How can I be? It doesn't make sense. So is it possible this is someone from a different culture than mine? Explain yourself. Because it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't, okay? I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna leave everything else alone in this world because it's just nuts. Um, feeling grateful. Feeling grateful, and um, it is important to, in a world where honesty is not valued, and where it's everything is upside down. I'm just gonna keep on being real. I'm just going to do it because this is what I want from the world. That's why this is in, just incensed to me. Someone just decided. You see, y'all, there's so many, there's more layers to this. Okay, let me get this one other fact about the teeth controversy. When these bumpkin motherfuckers came out of the woodwork bugging me, not just here, but in my emails, I think I even got a call. So how'd they get my number? I said, what is this? What is this? Why are you bothering me about the, the GoFundMe? You know, I didn't even set it up. It was set up for me. And if, if this is bugging you so much, you know, did you send me some money? You can have your money back. They didn't even send me any money. They didn't send me any money. Just some people up, getting up in my business. I See, it came through in the early emails. They think they'd caught a we, we, we caught him. We caught him. Here's another. Here's a, one of them dirty niggers fooling people, trying to take their money. We got him. We got him. That's that was that's what this bit. This is what that's what I got from this. Complete strangers victimizing me, but I'm not a victim. I'm been fighting, been fighting back. So again, Mr. Gorilla, whatever. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> people, people. What what what's up? What what is up with that mess? 
Peace out, people.